Hi, welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we are going to talk to you about OPAC hidden items and a system preference that ties in, which makes the exception to the rule. This is funny. We're on like four weeks of system preferences. <laughs> I was just thinking about that this morning. I'm like another system preference, but there are so they're so versatile. They're so customizable. It's great that people know about these options. So let's go into our COHA administration and we'll talk about OPAC hidden items. So many of you know about this system preference because this allows you to hide things like withdrawn statuses from the OPAC or missing statuses, or perhaps you have a certain location that you don't want visible in the OPAC. This is a great way to hide it. So you can see in the example that we have up on the screen, Let's use withdrawn. So we're saying withdrawn any status that has one. So in our authorized values, we have one set as withdrawn that will be hidden from the OPAC. Absolutely, we have location. So shelving locations that we do not want to see. Now, for example, if you have um, two copies of a book, maybe local history, and one is a circulating copy, and then the other one is noted as something that lives in the archives. That second item will not display, but the, the one you want to display will. So you can hide things at that item level, as Jesse is saying, and that's really helpful. Professional collections are always a good one that we see whether you have things that you want to catalog, but you don't want them visible to your patrons, this is a good way to do it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Now let's take in the next step. There's a new system preference that allows you to make an exception to the rule. You can now list a borrower category or multiple categories that would essentially be able to see these hidden items. Yeah. Um, I remember when this system preference came out and I was like, I don't know why, what the purpose of this would be. And then I talked to a public librarian who said, our reference librarian actually uses the OPAC to do the searching more than they do the staff client. So they, as they're logged into the OPAC, would be able to see things that patrons couldn't see. So that's helpful. And you had a good example for an academic, Jesse. Yeah, they had asked a question about allowing nurses to only see certain material and, you know, hiding that from the rest of the users in the collection. So, you know, that's a good way to do it. So you could add a borrower category for your nursing students, Jesse, and yep. say they can see the material type, item type, nursing textbooks or um, the location of everything in our nursing collection versus everybody seeing it. Now, one thing to keep into consideration, any borrower category that you list in this system preference for OPAC hidden items exceptions will be able to see any and all OPAC hidden items. So if you do have withdrawn marked as a hidden item, any patron category that's marked as an exception will see everything in that list. So just a few things to keep in mind. Kelly, why don't we do a search on the catalog for you know an item that we know might be withdrawn as we're not logged in. Yep. And then why don't we log in and show them what it looks like so that we could see it in both views. Absolutely. I'm gonna use my favorite search, the item search to find a withdrawn item. So there we go. There's my withdrawn, my tall search. Meet. Jack truck. There it is. It shows it is withdrawn. Um, I can click over to the OPAC in a new window and I will get a, a nice little error message that says this is not available. But if I did search that title, I'm not going to probably find, you know, I won't right. find it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's see, I have four results. Nothing. Nothing in there. Idle okay. search, just in case. Nope. Nope. 
Now let's log in as a staff member and then let's rerun that search. I'm gonna back to home. Okay, I've logged into the OPAC and I'm going to go ahead and find this book. And there it is. So log in, I'm logged in as that staff account. I can see that material where anybody else or no people that are not logged in would not have access to that title. So perfect, perfect. I love this system preference. I think it's great. It, a lot of libraries use it for a multitude of reasons and it's really helpful. All right, wonderful. Okay. Cool. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Have a great week.